We've come to the treacherous east coast of Africa to meet some of the world's most wanted men. These are the pirates of Somalia, holding the world's shipping industry to ransom. We're off the coast of Somalia. Red Sea and Suez Canal are up there. The Indian Ocean, just down that way. It's the busiest shipping lane in the world. More than 20,000 ships go past here every year. That's more than 50 ships a day. Running with a pirate crew is a risky business. Believe it or not, this ragtag bunch in their tiny tinnies have already hijacked a fleet of ships. The pirate king, Indiander, and his motley crew have made a fortune holding a gun to the head of some of the richest maritime companies in the world. You've got seven ships. What did you get for the first one? Two million dollars. How much did you make for number two? About 1.6. Ship number three? The third ship, two million. Altogether, the seven ships earned the tidy sum of 12.6 million US dollars. You're making riches beyond belief. Really, you're just a crook, aren't you? I want to answer this question. The money we collect from the ships is not an income that goes into the pocket of one person. A lot of people, a lot of human beings survive on this money along the shores of Puntland. Puntland, in northern Somalia, has become the modern-day pirate's lair and just as hidden away. To get here, an old Russian plane flies us east from Djibouti, across the top of Africa, to a tiny, forlorn port called Basasa. This is a no-go zone for Westerners. Just like the passing ships, we run the very real risk of kidnapping. So we've hired 15 local militia to guard us. Even so, the Australian government, including the Prime Minister himself, pleaded with us to cancel our trip. This is one of the reasons why Prime Minister Rudd didn't want us to come here. Survival is all about how many guns you've got. For the other reasons, just take a look around you. These people have absolutely nothing. The idea of becoming a pirate and earning millions is very attractive indeed. The archaic port of Basaso is a tiny speck beside the shipping superhighway of the world. The Gulf of Aden was once a fisherman's paradise, Africa's leading source of crayfish. But the locals say their seas were raided by foreign trawlers. So Indiander says now the fishermen catch big ships instead. We do it because foreigners looted our oceans. The trawlers sucked out every fish like a vacuum cleaner. We don't care whether we live or die, because there is nothing left to live for. If the first man falls, we send up another man. How do you climb up the ship? Up the ship? How? Yeah. We use a ladder, like a hook. We don't harm the ships. We collect taxes from them. These men see themselves as Robin Hoods of the high seas, fighting for justice. And they've become very good at it. You have a tiny boat. You're in a very big sea. How on earth can you catch a super tanker? We approach from behind the ship while it's cruising. We target the anchor, the hole where the anchor comes out, and throw a rope with a hook on the end. And then we climb up. We use tactics that you won't understand. But let me say, when someone is hungry, he is capable of doing anything. What sort of ransoms are being demanded? Anything up to 20, 30 million is, is a first demand. Why are they being paid? Why are people rolling over? If you simply uh, refuse to pay, I mean, the pirates have a lot of hostages. and uh, The consequences of, of those being shot, for instance, would be unimaginable. We know we have committed an offence, but when you lose your livelihood, you have nowhere to complain, nowhere to take your case to. 
So the pirates took the law into their own hands. And even the full force of the world's navies has so far failed to stop them.